Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it's been a while since my last video. But a friend called me the other day and asked me to take this trip with him, and so we did, and then I got stuck in Reykjavík for a few days, photoshooting some commercial photo project that took me a while, but we all have to bring home the bacon, just like the seagull that ended up on a mug in my online store. So, this was just a short break from YouTube, but the good news is that uh, during my trip here in Iceland, I did have some good time with my camera and the drone, of course. I love that thing. It was like moving from 2D to 3D, in a way. And I would also like to say that uh, my YouTube channel has, in a way, changed how I look at my country while driving around, looking around. Like now, I'm always thinking in uh, stories not just uh, photo and uh, video frames, like I'm used to. And uh, I do have a long list of projects to do this winter, but I'm starting with a volcano update, and uh, not just about uh, Geldingadalir. It is always plenty of action here in Iceland. But the video I'm showing you now was shot just a few days ago around uh, Mount Kælir, but uh, regarding the Geldingadalir volcano, it is not quite uh, dead yet. We can still see smoke coming up from it every now and then, telling us that there is still magma on the move, but it's not coming all the way up to the surface. So scientists are not willing to write it off. Not yet. But they do have uh, lowered the air traffic uh, warning code. But Mount Killer, it is still shaking under there. And we can see the Geldingadalir volcano just behind it, and uh, between Geldingadalir and the Mount Kælir is the place where you really don't want to go camping. The seismic activity under there has however changed lately, for a while it looked like this, very small earthquakes by the hundreds every day, but today it looks more like this. They come in all sizes now and at a different depth as well, so there is no way to read anything from the graph as it looks today. I did, however, predict an eruption there a while ago. Nothing happened, but uh, I can handle it. But there was a rather large earthquake by Lake uh, Kleivarvatn the other day, and the seismic unrest there seems to be on the rise. But uh, this region by Kleivarvatn, it is a separate uh, volcanic system, or a system that we call the Krisuvik volcanic system. So once again, I'm showing you this map to show you the fissure swarm from the Krisvik system that uh, stretches all the way into the capital. And uh, once again we see that those two volcanic systems, the system that uh, rules the Geltingadalir volcano and uh, the Krisvik system, they seem to be interacting in some way. Or like we often say about the cows here in Iceland, when one of them has to go, they all go. And that is how many of our experts describe the volcanic systems on the peninsula. So it might just be a matter of time when the systems around the Geltingadalir kick in. But we are seeing that the westernmost part of the peninsula has started to shake again. And overall, regarding what I've seen for the last two years, there is simply something more going on than we have already seen. The seismic activity on the peninsula it uh, dropped after the Geltingadalir eruption started. Or to make it simple, Geltingadalir was just a warm-up. But we might, however, get a break for some months now, even years. But uh, my guess is that uh, the next chapter will start sooner than later, judging from the seismic activity. And again, I am reminding you about uh, how close we are to the capital region. But uh, here I am, driving from uh, Mount Kælir, north, to the airport highway on this uh, horribly bumpy road that uh, always makes me think about the politicians who have been speaking about the importance of the tourist infrastructure on the peninsula and they have been doing so for decades, talking without any clue about the real value of the region until now. But the road up there to Kælir is just as bad as many of the politicians around here, sadly. This region is just a bunch of lava fields overlapping each other, but this one I'm driving on now is about 2000 years old, and those of you who have visited Iceland 
We all drive over it as we enter the capital region from the Keflavik International Airport, which is on the westernmost part of the peninsula. And this is a good place for a little sightseeing tour, hovering over the Kailer Road intersection on the Reykjanes Highway. This was the first four-lane highway in Iceland, but we are still struggling with our roads. Few people, many miles, but it is a shame though that not even this road is fully ready, as it narrows down to two lanes when we get closer to the city. And this is Iceland's busiest highway, connecting the 30,000 people that live on the peninsula to the capital region. And after we bypass this old lava field, we drive over the edge of a huge shield volcano. But its crater is only around one kilometer away from the Keltingadalir eruption. And it is somewhere around here where lava would flow again if an eruption would take place near old Keilir. But in the moment it seems unlikely though. But before we leave this region, I want to mention that Keilir means a cone. And notice the lava field around it. They float around Keilir after it erupted under glacier during the last ice age just like so many other uh, tough mountains around here. And uh, those smaller cones around Keilir, they are called uh, Keilir's bird, meaning Keilir's uh, children. And it remains a mystery if a new eruption will take place here, or if this unrest under Keilir will wake up the Geltingadalir eruption again, or even trigger the Krisuvik system. This is Iceland. Everything is possible. But I'm moving on since I have other news from three other volcanic systems that have been and are showing signs of unrest. But those are interesting times for sure. And I spoke recently about Grimsvatn under Vatnajökull glacier, but there are still no news from there, even though the lakes are full, ready to flow down any day. And data shows that the volcano is getting ready for an eruption as well, and that eruption will most likely occur after the glacial flood. But the magma is around 3 kilometers below the surface now, and I'm linking to a video that I made recently about this, or Grimsvatn in details. After all, Grimsvatn is one of the ticking time bombs that we have around here. But the third system that I'm mentioning today is by Lake Askja. There has been land uplift going on there, and uh, Askja has been closely monitored since uh, it began in August. The land uplift is around uh, 16 centimeters, and our experts are now uh, receiving data from uh, new measuring equipment that were installed there uh, recently. But the land uplift is, however, a lot slower now than it was in the beginning. But the data indicates that uh, there is clearly something strange going on there, so I will follow up on that one, for sure. But the fourth and the last uh, volcanic system that I'm covering today is even uh, more remarkable. But uh, recently we got the news that the so-called uh, Torvajökull region was showing uh, unusual signs of unrest or uh, low frequency pulses that can possibly mean uh, magma on the move. But we don't know for sure. But the Torvajökull region is a region that I have never spoken about before on my channel due to the obvious reason that uh, nothing has been going on there for the last uh, 500 years or so, only tourism. And uh, that area is one of the greatest natural pearl in Iceland. In this region we have uh, places like uh, Landmannalaugar, which uh, is just a part of this uh, most uh, powerful geothermal area in the country. And it would take me a long time to tell you all the details I would like you to know about this place. But there are three things that I would like to mention now. First, that the Torvajökull area has the largest caldera in Iceland. But it is very hard to see it in the landscape. It measures over 200 square kilometers. And the center is roughly by a place called Hrafntinnusker. Yet another beautiful name for you to learn, to pronounce. There is a lot of uh, rhyolite in the Torvajökull area, so the colors are like nothing else. This is truly a spectacular place. 
And uh, in fact, this is a region that deserves a complete uh, documentary on my behalf. But the problem is that uh, this is located on the highlands. You can only go up there during summers without uh, major problems. But the mountain roads, they do only cover a little part of the region or of what is there to see. And uh, when I was preparing this video, I did uh, once again find out how little we know about our nature. But the border bunga fissure swarm stretches all the way into the Torvajökull region and border bunga is Iceland's hotspot. And uh, many experts say that uh, Lake Askja is also a part of the border bunga system. So when we take a look at the complete picture with border bunga, we have the 2014 Holrun eruption from border bunga and it has been reloading ever since. We see that through frequent earthquakes and then we have land uplift by Lake Askja and at the other end strange unrest in the Torvajökull region. And then when I was trying to read myself through what we know, I found out that some say that it is as the Torvajökull system has no will of its own now and is mainly ruled by Bárðarbunga, Fischerswarm. And uh, there I am at the main reason why I'm so interested in geology. I just want to know more about the network or the plumbing under my country. The bigger picture, the ruling forces and how the systems interact. And uh, I'm always surprised when I drown myself into reports or books about the subject. Always finding out that the basic structure that I'm looking for is nowhere to be found. It's just bits and pieces here and there. Just like with the Reykjanes Peninsula, some say that uh, there are six uh, volcanic systems there, others say four or five. But uh, as for Bárðarbunga, there was this uh, big earthquake there recently. They come every now and then at uh, shallow depth and uh, together with Grímsvöll, which is just beside Bárðarbunga, we are talking about the biggest and most dangerous volcanic system in the country. So I am kind of wondering why we don't get the bigger picture covered by our experts. After all, we are talking about that the Bárðarbunga system is shaking from end to end. And if you want to know more about this system, I have this third party video on my channel with subtitles. It covers the eruption in the year 870 and 1477 when a 60 km long fissure opened up, giving you an idea about the size of this volcanic system that is teasing us now. So I have every reason to follow up on this very soon. But this is the overall status today. The Geltingadalir eruption might be over, but we have plenty of other things to think about. And as for my channel, I managed to shoot uh, some hundreds of uh, gigabytes in the last uh, two weeks and uh, I've already started to edit again. So you will see plenty of new content in the coming weeks. Not always about uh, the geology of Iceland, of course, but uh, often uh, geology related, but uh, always some good footage that will please the eye. And uh, with that, I'm sending you best regards from a volcanic island, Aisla.